What do you want, freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? For both you cannot have. That's an interesting line from Jesus. So for me, that these last 30 years have been really an investigation of, show me freedom of the mind and release me from my concepts of freedom of the body. Because those concepts we have, we talk about people imprisonment at times or where we feel like we're confined or in the body. And, and we have great witnesses like uh, Mandela and Gandhi who really went for freedom of the mind. Freedom that's in the core of our being. And I think that's a very ambitious topic actually for us all this weekend. You know, we practice with everything that comes and that's the glory of it. And it is quite a thorough practice to release all of our concepts of freedom that we've projected onto the body. One of the sections in the course that helped me out was the hero of the dream section, where he contrasts other sections, the dreamer of the dream, basically saying that's where your freedom comes, is when you see that you're the dreamer of the dream. But the hero of the dream, uh, the serial adventures of the body, <laughs> <laughs> he makes it sound so fun, you know, it looks like, like, sounds like a soap opera or something. The serial adventures of the body is, are the hero, and there's such a focus on was it, was it good, did it hurt you, did you, did it help you. All the things around the environment, all the things uh, that, that seem to involve conditions of the body, we have to realize that if we free our mind, then the body will be useful as long as it's needed and gently laid aside. That sounds really appealing to me. Uh, some of you know Yogananda, the story, story of Paramahansa Yogananda, that he was out there, I believe in LA, at a, at a museum, had given a talk and then was having dinner with his disciples and then said goodbye and then his body just remained in a state of non-decay for weeks. That's a pretty strong symbol of a highly, highly trained mind. And I see those as inspirations for us, that we know that this is a course in mind training. We can take heart, that we can give our life over to that mind training. And when we're tempted to think that it's something external, something in the world that's causing something of our body, we can just see that that's just another victim thought. As if something not our will, something outside of us, is doing something to us. A cause and effect relationship. And the whole Course is teaching us that, that God is the cause, Christ is the effect. God is the creator, the creation is Christ. And that the whole world is the projection of this idea that cause and consequence, cause and effect, are actually real in linear time. All of our disciplines, Everything we've ever learned since childhood and all the way up through university is based on what Jesus calls spurious cause-effect relationships. That there's causes in the world and there's effects. And many of them regard the body. You know, don't stay out to the sun too long or your radiation will give you cancer. You see that? The sun is being blamed for the cancer. When we know that it's just, there's some attack thoughts eating away in there <laughs> that we're not willing to forgive, and that's a reflection of that. So for me, I enjoy quantum physics, I enjoy everything that I'm reading. I enjoy, I mentioned last night in Boulder, Abraham Maslow. Does anyone remember Abraham Maslow, his hierarchy of needs? Yes. What was at the top? Self-actualization. Self that's know thyself. That's what the Greeks were telling us, that's what Jesus is telling us. And yet, what was one of the characteristics of self-actualizing people? That means and end were the same. They were so in the moment, so in the, the yoga, so in the art, so in the, the, even athletes, in the zone. They were so in the moment that they were in the joy of that moment, and they weren't thinking, where is this leading? Like the artist who's painting, or we'll say being painted through, 
not thinking, when will I finish the painting? How much money will this bring? You know, all those future consequences. Abraham Meslo was right on it when he said that self-actualizing people saw that there was no difference between means and ends. 